Hello van lovers. So today we have a new brand for me. It's called Autobots Models. It's of a Mitsubishi Delica. Okay. Wikipedia is telling me the Delica is a mix of delivery car. You know, that's how they came about with the name. Delivery car. Delica. Alright. Uh, this name nameplate started in 1968 and went through seven generations. But we're looking at the third generation that started in 1986 and they extended production all the way up to 2013 depending on what country it was made in. This was made in several different countries by the way. There's also two wheelbases listed so I'm not sure if I'm going to even bother measuring this. Uh, this could have been powered by an 1.4 liter up to 2.5 liter inline 4 petrols or a 3.2 inline 5 diesel and this rear wheel drive or four wheel drive okay this model looks like it's four wheel drive look at this box here so we got a nice uh well <laughs> never mind very pixelated forest background i don't know why they would choose to well i guess they did it on purpose so you can see the text better little camping thing again pixelated it almost looks like it's from a video game screenshot it from a video game maybe it was so this is clearly not licensed I don't think let's not be wrong again but uh, 15 and up it's not a toy so maybe it won't roll but yeah there's nothing say Mitsubishi on here I mean it doesn't even say Mitsubishi here so I'm afraid Autobots models is probably a fly-by-night operation and next year they might not exist so there's some factory somewhere in China just making a bunch of random branded models, it seems. All right, so there's a little accessory bag here. We might as well just go through this now before I forget. We have two spare wheels. And I guess this is a good way. They look identical to what's on the model. So we'll just take a closer look at this one. All right, so we got some nice balloon tires, so that's good. And uh, some sort of center maybe like a hub locking you know uh Renny spokes but they're passing air at the same time so that's good the tire treads yeah they're present uh, very funky tire pattern and then uh, there's no brakes apparently but there's such small openings i'm not sure if they're necessary yeah, and also it's a black wheel we'll have to see what it looks like on the model so it's nice that there's two of those then we have a cooler, it looks like. Just a silver, or some sort of silver, metal, aluminum storage bin of some sort. And it's got some latch details there. Looks like the lid is a separate piece, but it seems to be glued down. Yeah. Okay. Then we have like one of these Pelican kind of cases. All this, yeah, we got the handle and the latches and stuff. Maybe some photo gears in there. And then we have two extra tanks here, most likely for petrol or diesel. And yeah, they have nice molded details, the strengthening ribs and stuff, little hand grabs. So pretty nice, again, I mean, considering how small they are, look at my disgusting fingers. And yet, these things look pretty cool. Alright, so the, back to the model here. Now these photos are from Motor Trend. Motor Trend said this is a fourth generation Delica, but I actually believe Wikipedia this time. It's up to you to decide. It has a very loose cover, obviously. The base of this thing is one screw and a peg holding it in place from rotating. It's got this photoish metal piece here, and it just says the brand. <laughs> it didn't even capitalize the M there. And then the Delica. Alright. I think I saw on AliExpress some resin versions of the Delica 4x4 and I thought about getting it a while ago but it was really pricey so I, I just never bought it and then this came along at a much cheaper price but this is die cast not resin and I also thought this doesn't make any sense at all because you have such big tires if this thing hits a bump it's just going to grind into the wheel well right? But I bought it anyways because I like vans and this is a lifted like off-road van and you can clearly live down by the river as this photograph says in this van. So now what I'm debating is taking it off the stand. That's plastic. I don't know. 
Oh, it seems like there's a lot of fragile bits here. I'm not going to take it off. Yeah, if I touch certain things like these wiper blades, they're going to get lost. Which has happened to my Ferrari GTO model. Oh, look at this. There's a license plate that just fell out of that was in that bag as well, I think. And it says Delica upside down. So I could have put that somewhere safe on the cooler, maybe. I don't know if there's a second license plate. I have to rewind the video. Or did that fall off the model? See, it's there. Hmm, I don't know. Alright, let's compare to these Motor Trend pictures. I accidentally turned the camera to stop video. That's the problem with touchscreen phones. Alright, so here we are again. And I'm pretty sure Autobots was looking at these photographs when they made, chose to make this colorway. This this model does come in other colors, by the way, but uh, I really like the idea of the tan van. I wish the wheels were silver, though, so you could see the details of them. Alright, take what you will from that angle. I have another front view coming up anyways. Here's the side view. Looks like the air intake is on this side. Like, look at the rack. It's even, the roof rack is two, like that one. So it's pretty cool. So whoever owns this van, I think this van is in Taipei. Maybe, maybe that's where Autobots is. Maybe this guy even contracted some factory in China to, to make this. I don't know. We got the same ladder, but I mean, I swear that this model looks pretty much identical to these photographs, right? Alright, let's uh, do that last front view. And so, the lights, right? The yellow lights. This is definitely this person's car in miniature form. Or van. Alright, very cool. Very cool. So, you might want to look up Motor Trend Delica. And I'm sure you'll find that article. It's not a very long article, though. All right, starting from the side, let me move the camera and get up some better light. So this is a glossy tan. I'm sure the real truck is as well. It looks it. Ah, uh, boy. Starting with the wheels, yeah. I mean, I guess you don't need the brakes because it's just all darkness in there anyways. But yeah, just like the side photograph of the real one, there isn't much clearance, uh, at least with the rear one, between the tire and the, the actual fender. So, maybe this is a little less accurate than the photograph, but the rear looks pretty accurate to the photograph, the, the gap here. This actually might have more gap than the real photograph, so you can rewind, obviously, to that photo comparison. So, we have a four-wheel drive printed here, we have a raised set of, like, molding here, and it's painted black, two stripes. The rail for the swinging, sliding doors here, and there's a black detail there, maybe like a bump stop or something. Uh, the panel gaps are a little bit filled in too much with the tan paint, but that's not the Autobot's fault, it's just the paint color's fault. If this is, you know, a metallic, they wouldn't need to put so much paint in there. But white, yellow, you know, lighter colors have to, you have more, you know, to block the light. Otherwise, you'd see the edges of the casting. A little recess for the fingers, and this is sticking out a little bit for the handle. This is clearly recessed on both sides. Really nice door handles. Alright, uh, there's a little black I'm noticing here for like the molding, but maybe there isn't. No, it is printed on the casting. Okay. These windows, though, do look like they have a black outline printed on the windows. But this front window doesn't seem to have any printing on it. Alright, so you can see the separate piece for this, you know, frame for the mirror. And the mirror has silver paint, which I've grown to like because silver paint can't fall off like, an, like a foil sticker can. So it's less realistic, but it'll always be there. I can't focus on it, sorry. We'll have to move on. Alright, so the side of the rack here, on the roof, there seems to be lights, yeah, and they are on the real photograph. There's some LED lights. So these are just painted silver, though. Now there's a, I'm noticing there's a window, I think, yeah. There's two long windows, 
in a sunroof. So while we're at the top, this is a piece of metal. You can hear it, the tone of it. So that's a photo etched grate. But I'm uh, suspecting the frame here, these tubes and all that are plastic. But really cool. I mean, it, you can see the windows through it, so it's really nice, nicely done. Okay, let's go to the front here. Well, actually, I'm not done. The side, side running board. There's like some dotted texture in there. Let me put this down. Yeah, nice little traction dots. What I'm also noticing is a uh, little silver dots for the locks here on the doors. Okay. So yeah, these are separate photo etched uh, wiper blades. So that's why I'm hesitant to take it off the stand because the they glue might not be strong. The blue little black dots here for the wiper fluid, I imagine. And then uh, I get a different angle. Alright, so the headlights, very cool, clear lens, but uh, I think they might be painted silver on the outside, yeah, that's what gives the, the round effect there, but they're clearly transparent because this is the same piece, and there's a lot of depth to it. Uh, and the real truck is running clear lenses, but you can see there's a little orange inside for the orange light bulb for the turn signal. So that's really well done. Very cool. Yeah. I think you can maybe see, you know, there's like a light bucket back there. Just based on the triangular reflection. I think there's a cone back there. Very neat. Alright. So these fog lights are cool because there's not paint. It's an amber lens and clear lenses on top of a silver painted piece of plastic which is you know the light bucket so very cool I thought there were paint in the packaging I bought this locally at one of my favorite dealers okay um, the winch here yeah a little bit of depth there Tampo's all right uh, a little extra molding flash here and then you have some I don't know maybe these are turret signals or running lights or something but they're painted painted well hmm what's weird is this is sticking out I don't think this one is that one's just flat I think you can clearly see the dimensionality of this one but it's lost here so that's kind of weird all right hmm so this must be a skid guard I don't know if there's any texture let me get a flashlight yeah, there is that same dotted texture there. Okay, and you can see there's a plastic spacer holding the chassis, so it's keeping the tires from flatting out if it's over screwed to the uh, base. So that's good. A lot of brands skip that. They screw the model down tight, you take it off the base, and the tires have flat spots, which is actually realistic, but I don't like it. Okay, so this mirror here in the the left is different from that mirror. The angle is different. See? Totally different. So that's a whole different mold there. Well, I guess it would have to be anyways. But yeah, silver paint in there. So yeah, the intake system here. It seems to be a separate plastic piece. A little venting detail there. And I'm going to guess this is like a rollout, you know, awning. Hmm. Yes, looking at the side photograph, technically that should be gray if we're mimicking that, the real photos, but it's nice that it's there. All right, so that's good. Those LEDs up there again. Oh yeah, the top lights here. Yeah, same thing, clear. Looks like a clear lens, I think. Am I wrong? No, they have to be clear. Just looking at it with the naked eye. Yeah, I guess they are clear. Alright, so then yeah, this is supposed to be like a big LED light bar. This silver, silver stripe there. Oh, really cool again. Alright. Alright, so I think the rest of this looks pretty similar to the other side. Now we got a 
little rear mirror here silver plastic piece same with this ladder photo etched wiper blade and then thick tail lights again with now the delicas printed on the outside same with the uh the separators but you can see orange clear and red for sure the little peg holes going into the casting this uh, license plate that separate piece with the printing is great Look at the rear photo what is this thing I don't know, it looks like it's rope or something just tied on the back. On the real photo, that is. Little bumperettes, I think, is what this is. And then these are little uh, boxes to put uh, a tow, uh, a trailer or some sort. Maybe it's a rack for like bikes or something like that. You put in the uh, square tubing, you know. So, okay. Oh, there's also like a rear light back here, but this one definitely looks like it's painted, which is fine. I'd rather have the clear lights on the front than the back. Hmm, the interior though. Now this, the rear windows are clearly tinted. All of them. But the front windows are, are clear, so for legal reasons. It's nice that they went through that detail. And because you have the sunroof there, you can actually see the interior without a flashlight. Uh, there is a rear view mirror hanging right there. Very square looking dashboard, very angular. There's a steering wheel, it's uh, off at a little angle, but you can see the stocks there, the control stocks. Center console, texture on the seats. Yeah, retro looking steering wheel. The instrument cluster is just flat plastic. There's no decal or anything in there, though. Okay, but I can, I can totally live with that just because this thing has metal, <laughs> metal uh, racks up top. Or it's not really a, is that a rack? What would you call this? Baskets. I mean, you can still tie stuff to it, so that's why I want to say rack. But all right, terminology doesn't matter. Let's see if we can get. Well, that's a kind of a wet down. The rear end of this guy's van is totally blank. I didn't bother to look at the interior shots on that Motor Trend article. But I kind of feel like there would be seats there on a van, right? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they had... It looks like there's a rear seat on that side photograph. So, possibly that is why they tinted the windows. Maybe they have intentions to make delivery vans of this casting later on. Hmm. It is strange though. Uh, hmm. Maybe that's how they save money and make the outside look so nice. Okay. Well, I gotta say it's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, I also don't notice any defects. Uh, execution wise is pretty much flawless. Is there a little scratch in the tire? Well, the wheels actually, well, no, the front ones are screwed down too much. Well, there's only one screw, though. So I'm sure it actually would roll if you took it up the stand. But, uh, again, I don't want to touch those rubber blades. But is there tension? I'm going to loosen that screw. don't touch those wiper blades. So if you're into that sort of thing, there's a lot of uh, chassis detail on the bottom of this guy for sure. And all these weird tanks and stuff like that and the drive shaft and everything. I had to turn my air conditioner on, sorry. Uh, there's a screw in the front and maybe it's a tab in the back, but it's not worth opening up. We already saw the interior, there's pretty much nothing there. No, you know what? This this front axle doesn't want to roll at all. Let me back out here. I mean, it will roll, but not freely. Not gonna. Yeah, not gonna get get you winning any races down a Hot Wheels track. All right. Well, I guess I will just leave it off the stand for the rest of this video and just screw it back on later. So I guess we should get those accessories on there. 
and maybe that license plate as well. So I like to use the good old poster buddy stuff. Alright, I put a bunch on there to save some time, but yeah, this is Uhu Powder Fix Pro, but you can use any poster buddy. Just gonna put a little dab here on the bottom. Now I am a little concerned about squeezing this stuff onto that thin piece of metal of this uh, roof rack system. It does concern me. Let's try with this tire. If you twist it a little bit as you push it down, I think it should be fine. Okay, just lightly get it into that metal grating. All right. Can't really get those both widthwise. All right, so that's not falling off. So we're gonna put this Pelican case. Maybe it's gonna have to go in the front. Alright, so yeah, that works pretty well. Last thing is this tiny license plate is constantly vanishing. So the rear license plate's already on. I guess that's why they left it in the bag. I guess you could put it right there. Which I guess well, let's just lay it there without any putty for now. And see if it'll fit on that surface. I think it'll work. So, one other thing. This little bit of molding flash on this brush guard bothers me. Hmm. I don't know if that helped or not, but because there's, there's a cavity, it's a, it's a bend, I'll probably have to put it in a pretty decent size amount of this putty to fill in that gap. try this trick. Sometimes it works. We'll see. I take a little bit of this extra putty and it should rip off some of the excess. So that's good. Sorry. I hit focus here. I'm not looking through this, the camera anymore.
See, so I grabbed most of that that uh, putty that was excess. I could spend more time before I get the other bit out, but I think this video is running too long, so let's leave it the way it is. Okay, let me get the coaster out. Alright, let's get good old B.A. Baracus' 18 band by Greenlight out here. So that's a full size band. And the Delica is not. So I think this is probably actually is 164 scale. Just based on that comparison. Here's an old High Ace by TLV. A High Ace would be considered a full size Japanese van. So again, the Delica is smaller than that. Alright. Here's another TLV of a Town Ace, which is, I think, their smaller van. And so I feel like uh, this could have been competing against a Town Ace. But this is an older Town Ace, so that's... If you look at the overall length, they're very sturdy. Pretty close. Yeah. And the last one, an off-road more off-road oriented a, a newer Defender 110 and this is I believe a Tarmax yeah Tarmac Works Global 64 pretty nice so there's the plan view I'll bring them all back this space Well, like I say, this model turned out a lot nicer than I thought it would be. Minus the fact that it has these goofy fender gaps, but again, look at this photo. <laughs> I mean, that tire is so close to the fender. If that hit a big bump, is I don't understand how this thing's going to work. Maybe this guy just doesn't off-road it at all. The front's a little bit better, but that seems really close to me. So this model actually doesn't look that ridiculous. It's just that the real truck kind of looks ridiculous but in a cool way so yeah uh, Autobots good stuff uh, unfortunately I pretty much think you're gonna go out of business making a bunch of unlicensed products so if, if unlicensed products don't bother you guys I suggest if you like off-road vans pick this one up it's pretty cool a lot of uh, details a lot of value for the money uh, I think so yeah well if they come up with anything else you know I'll I might try them again. There's no reason right now for me to say no. I really like all these, uh, the plastic headlights in the front are just crazy. I mean, you got one, two, three, four. There's eight pieces of plastic in the front of this thing. So that's pretty nice. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next off-road vehicle review. Thanks.